This is the Final Whistle podcast for the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score from the race course. Wrexham 2, Aldershot 2. Four draws in a row now for Wrexham. Frustrating. This one was not just frustrating, it was crazy. Wrexham, <laughs> you could argue very lucky not to get a beating. On the other hand, very unlucky not to win it. As well, it just became a game which by the end was difficult to really analyse. Anyway, let, let's go through it from the start, see if we can make some sense of it. Actually, let's go back to before the start. Interesting uh, things going on in terms of both teams before the match had even begun. Firstly, Wrexham. Dean Keats deciding to tear up the blueprint which he's used all season, the, the 4 4 2. He's obviously looked at the last few games, and particularly the Solly Hull match, and thought he, he needed to do something to inject more creativity into the side. And the way he did that was by switching to a 4 2 3 1, which saw Quigley as a lone striker. Nicky Devedix working off him on the flanks were Jonathan Franks and Chris Holroyd and Marcus Kelly brought back into midfield alongside Sam Wedgbury to give extra creativity on that side uh, of the, the pitch as well so a really attacking gambit by Wrexham interesting that they made such a big change having only had a turnaround since last Tuesday uh, and it, it didn't really come off I'll go into that in more detail in a moment because there was more pre-match drama from Aldershot's point of view now firstly they had a very disappointing home draw on Tuesday against Bromley. And they responded by chopping up their side considerably. Four changes. Uh, looking at the team sheet, it was difficult to work out exactly how they were going to line up. In all honesty, lack of defenders in their opening lineup. And they had further problems when in the warm-up, the goalkeeper, <laughs> Lewis Ward, and Jim Kellerman, one of the players brought into the side, who I assume was brought in to play at fullback, even though he usually is a midfielder, were both injured in the warm-up and had to be withdrawn, which meant Aldershot had to bring in two players off the bench to start, Jake Cole in goal and Jake Gallagher, again a midfielder, who was pressed into playing as a fullback. Surely he hadn't prepared for this. And they were only allowed three men on the bench as a result. But despite that, they started the better side. Wrexham's new shape just didn't seem to bed in and, and suit Wrexham at all. And, and frankly, how the first half ended level is beyond me because it was probably Wrexham's worst performance of the season, that first half. Aldershot caused huge problems. There's a lot of um, complimentary talk I've heard since the final whistle about Aldershot's efforts. Uh, I've, I've got to say, I've seen a fair bit of Aldershot this season and... I didn't think that what they did today was anywhere near what they're capable of and certainly nowhere near the standards they reached in November when they absolutely walloped Wrexham, beat us 2-0, but really played beautifully. Uh, there was certainly a lot of threat about them, but I think it was more that Wrexham played badly in the first half that really allowed all the shots to, to cause so many problems. And, and they certainly did after a peculiar first 10 minutes in which I think both sides were trying to adjust to their altered circumstances and neither side looked terribly comfortable. After about quarter of an hour, the older shot did start to make the chances that their pressure deserved. Wrexham was struggling to retain any form of possession, struggling to find any real release uh, as they tried to get up the pitch. The 4 2 3 1 leaves you vulnerable on the flanks, and Wrexham did look vulnerable on the flanks. The fullbacks were, were very exposed at times, and in fact, then in maybe hangs a tail. Roberts, from the very start, Frankly, it was terrific. The number of times he made brilliant blocks and tackles when he was left isolated on the right-hand side. And on the left, Jennings had, had a rather scratchy start to the game, made a couple of mistakes possibly because of the lack of cover. But then, as the game wore on, he really started to get into it and started winning some crucial tackles. Um, that's not necessarily to criticise Franks and Holroyd, the wide players. It's more that their role isn't really expecting them to drop off as deep as it might if they were playing wide in a 4-4-2. With sitting Rex and were left open, the older shot fullbacks were able to live high up the flank in the Wrexham half, uh, particularly, and maybe that's a problem for Wrexham from the point of view of Gallagher, the guy who'd been brought into the team, because he's a midfielder. He's a central midfielder. He's obviously had no preparation for this, and he's told you're going to have to fill in at right back because of the injury in the warm up. Uh, well, he was allowed to be in his comfort zone, really, because he wasn't having to defend. He was playing basically 30 yards out from Wrexham's half on the right flank most of the time. And he wasn't put under pressure. And the chances began. Firstly, it was Kinsella uh, feeding the ball in. A, a rather simple through ball. Just cutting it in between right back and right sided centre back. Rendell found himself completely clear on goal. One on one. He took on Dunn. Dunn 
went to ground but managed to get a good block in as Rendell looked to hit it and then equally Dunn did well to get up and pounce on the loose ball as Rendell attacked it so good work by Dunn to keep Lexham into the game early on then it was Oyeleke who in the first hour was influential driving forwards from midfield uh, feeding a ball into Rendell who span on the turn six yards out and hit a shot fantastic block by Roberts really was terrific to stop that from going in the ball spanned back out of the box and the left-back Kinsella who tucked in hit an absolute screamer as it came out to him from 25 yards putting it just wide of the right post. Then it was all to shot again pressing on and coming terribly close a corner swung in beyond the far post a big centre-back Will Evans climbing up and winning a good header putting it back across the goal looping it over Dunn who was helpless Wedgbury did well to head it off the line at the far post Wrexham then breaking up the other end having their first moment of threat themselves Holroyd feeding in across from the left hand side Davidix managing to just get a touch onto it and Quigley did well alert play to hit it first time but Evans who by this time had got back to track Wrexham's breakaway was able to get across and get a good block on it six yards out it was massively against the run of play halfway through the second, the first half when Wrexham then took the lead maybe appropriately in about as scruffy a, manage, a manner as you could imagine a corner from the left hand side swept into the near post and oh, a horrible moment for Jake Cole the older shot keeper who well, he came for us whether it took a little nick in front of him I'm not sure Jennings made a run into that sort of area but Cole it was going straight into his chest it seemed and he somehow managed to sort of pour it downwards in a way and even though I've, I've had a quick look before recording this podcast a couple of instants so I can get my my facts straight because it was such a scruffy goal um it was hard to judge even looking at the video from behind the goal but it, it looks like he just sort of pushed it onto Quigley's stomach Quigley standing close range and it just ricocheted into the net Quigley was very quick to claim the goal and very quick to point to his stomach to say that's where it hit me and well Wrexham massively against the run of play and in, in very peculiar manner found themselves ahead but the shape of the game didn't really change all that much as older shot started to create chances once more a near post corner a couple of minutes after Wrexham's goal Rendell attacking it couldn't get his neck around it enough heading it wide then a far post cross by Kinsella Fenlon with a great chance 15 yards out deciding to place his volley back across Dunn and putting it off target a real opportunity that Wrexham pushed on and had one more chance while they were 1-0 up it was a from a set piece a free kick half cleared which when it was swung back in was deflected to Manny Smith he couldn't quite get his body shot or body shape around enough to get a meaningful shot in and goal but when his effort was blocked Holroyd picked up on the left hand side cut inside tried to catch the keeper out it was maybe set up for him to try and curl it around towards the far post he tried to pull a powerful near post shot but Cole was more alert to this than he was to Wrexham's opening goal got down low to his right and held on to it and Wrexham five minutes later were frustrated that that didn't go in because Aldershot got themselves an equaliser again and Wrexham letting a goal in just before the break a rather worrying habit that they'll want to try and break immediately this time it was a nice studied build up by Aldershot McCoyd breaking down the right hand side into the box and chipping a lovely ball into the far post and really there was no chance Fenlon was going to miss his free header from close range as he got up and headed it into the net and Wrexham went off at half time uh, having been outplayed and aware that they really had to do something about it and sensibly the Wrexham coaching staff acted very swiftly in an attempt to address that they abandoned the 4-2-3-1 which they'd started the match with and reverted to a more familiar 4-4-2 with Quigley and Holroyd now the two strikers Franks playing on the right hand side and Davidix playing on the left uh, initially though Aldershot still were able to push on and put pressure on when the within the first minute of the restart there was a good break down the left hand side the ball swung in taking a slight deflection Oyeleke again trying to get ahead of the midfield having a shot at it from decent range but never looking like he was going to get on top of it he swung at it and put it over the bar a few minutes later it was a good breakaway down the right hand side by Fenelon denied by an excellent sliding block by Jennings he tried to drive in a shot on the angle 
putting the ball behind for a corner and then another moment of danger a cross swung into the box Manny Smith on the stretch could only get his top of his head to it and help it across the box McCoy on the left hand side cutting in and from 10 yards out hitting a driven shot trying to sneak it inside the near post as Chris Holroyd had tried to at the end of the first half desperately close to hitting a net that had just shaved the post however credit to Wrexham They'd made the correct decision in ditching the 4-2-3-1 and going to something more familiar. And as the half wore on, they started to bed in and they started to succeed in taking the game more to Aldershot than they had done at any other point in the match. First opportunity which they carved out was a set piece. Devedix swinging the ball into the far post. The two centre-backs were up there. Looked like it was Smith who got the final test, heading it back across the face of goal. And it was attacked by Holroyd, lunging in cold, did terrifically well to stretch and just about managed to pour the ball away. The two centre-backs then were incandescent, chasing the referee. You can only assume there may have been a hand in there as the two of them attacked it at the far post. The referee, anyway, was not interested. But in the 58th minute, Wrexham got the lead, uh, which again was... Oh, God, oh, I was about to say their play deserved. That, that wouldn't be true. But they had at least clawed themselves back into it. And then they took the lead uh, with a classic route one goal, really. Long ball forwards. Holroyd jumped. Excellent flick on by him. Quigley ran in behind the last defender. One-on-one with the keeper. Uh, what a lovely, cool finish. He waited for the keeper to commit himself and put it where the keeper wasn't. And Wrexham were ahead. And the crowd was suddenly really on the edge of their seats, making an excellent noise. And Wrexham suddenly looked buoyed up. They pushed on. They were in a corner almost straight away and were trying to, to pour the pressure on. It looked very, very promising and a massive change in what happened previously. Aldershot carved out the next couple of chances, but they were both really against the run of play. Wrexham suddenly getting the better of things, pushing on impressively. The two strikers combining well. Quigley's pace was stretching Aldershot and always offering an, uh, an out ball when Wrexham were defending. He was looking to run in behind and offering that opportunity. Holroyd's energy and industry was admirable. And Frank's massive kudos to him. First half anonymous, second half... His work rate to helping out Roberts was impressive and his uh, threat going forwards was magnified massively. And Wrexham were looking a much more better functioning unit. Marcus Kelly as well, who in the first half, maybe the first hour, should we say, hadn't had the happiest time if it started to settle into his midfield role alongside the, the ever energetic Wedgbury. Well, Aldershot, like I said, did have the next couple of chances. Rowe, always a quality player when he finds a bit of space in the opposing half, ripping a, a vicious far post cross beyond the far post. Fennel on attacking it, managed to get ahead to it at a tight angle and put it on target. Dunn did really well tracking across his line just to make himself big and get a block in it to deflect it away. And then an opportunity when McCoy swung a ball into the box. Rendell miss hitting his shot, but it span horribly into the goal mouth. Wedgbury having to clear it from under his bar. Still, Rex would decide they were more threatening or pushing on in this period of play. And therefore, it was a bit of a surprise when Aldershot, 15 minutes left, got an equaliser. It was a, a controversial affair because of what led up to the decision to give Aldershot the corner. Jennings breaking forwards, held on to the ball 20 yards out on the left flank and was challenged by Fenelon. It looked like a foul to me. I've had a quick look back at the reverse angle footage and yeah, it still looks like a foul to me. Fenlon running at him from a distance looks to me to play the man before the ball, knock him to the floor, turns the referee, didn't give the foul, and he carried up the pitch, played it forwards, and Aldershot won the corner. The ball ripped into the near post, a terrific quality by Rowe. Reynolds making an excellent diagonal run to the near post. A flick head. And Wrexham found themselves level once more. Great quality on the set piece. Good movement by Reynolds. But I've got to say, again, another worrying habit. Wrexham suddenly have started conceding goals from corners, and that's not like us, really. To be fair to Wrexham, they came back well from this. By now, the game was stretched. Aldershot had made a number of attacking substitutions. I'll say a number, three. They only had three subs on the bench, remember, after those two injuries in the warm-up. They had such an attacking-looking lineup and on the pitch, and Wrexham were really committed to going forwards as well. And it was a... It was a really exciting end to the game which which mostly was in Wrexham's favour and which quite frankly should have ended in a home win because Wrexham missed a couple of glorious chances firstly Wrexham seeing, breaking down the left hand side nice combination between Jennings and Quigley Jennings swinging across to the far post and Kevin Roberts 
desperately unlucky not to get his first goal for the club. Climbing well at the far post, heading it down into the goal mouth on target. Didn't get a huge amount of power on it, but got it on target. And the defender in front of the keeper lunged, got a touch onto it. The keeper called going down to his right. Suddenly it was dropping to his left. And luckily for him, it didn't quite have enough pace on it. And he was able to scramble back and grab hold of it. The Aldershot equaliser had uh, been given by the linesman because Wedgbury had headed the ball off the line. The linesman was right to say I had crossed the line. This time he just wondered if the other linesman might help us out, but Cole had got down to it in time. And then Wrexham, again, trying to create, trying to make chances. A free kick launched into the box, half cleared. Devedix in the left channel, hitting a good volleyed shot, which took a deflection, a span into the side netting agonisingly. But the, <laughs> uh, the biggest chance would come with two minutes left. Simon Ainge thrown on up front for his debut as Wrexham maintained the pressure and then started putting long balls onto his head. And he did well. He put himself about well, caused problems. This one, though, oh, what an opportunity. A long ball forwards. Ainge on the edge of the box, flicking it on perfectly and quickly ran in off him. What a chance for Quigley, who did so well taking his two goals all on his own in the box. He felt he had to score, but the keeper stuck on his line. All he had to do really was hit the target, but he pulled it and put it wide at the left post. A massively, massively frustrating moment for Wrexham, and they nearly paid the price because in the first of the added four minutes, all the shot went cross. Wedgbury, who's made that error at Solihull when he gave the ball away in his own half, and Holy Solihull broke to hit the post, repeated the mistake, gave the ball away in his own half. Taylor broke down the left-hand side, pulled it into Rendell on the right flank, and Rendell, coming in from a tight angle, drove the ball into the near post. A good parry by Dunn, who stood up well. In the 93rd minute of added time, there was one final good chance for Wrexham. Devedick swinging in a corner, the keeper coming and stretching out, could only pour it away. It dropped loose, was played back in, and there was Jonathan Franks attacking it in space on the penalty spot. He had to hit it first time, admittedly, oh, but he couldn't get on top of it at all, and he lashed it over the bar. Frustration for Wrexham, although you can't deny that Aldershot in the first half could have put the game beyond reach. So I guess in, in summary... You can't argue against a draw. It was just a hell of a scenic route we took to get to yet another draw. For further analysis of the game, have a listen to what James Harrison and I made of the match on Callan FM after the final whistle. Wow. Well, let, let, let's try, if we can, to pick the bones out of that one, James, because it was a poor first half performance by Wrexham. We tried a new formation and it just didn't work. But credit to the coaches they had the sense to change things around and uh, back in the 4-4-2 second half we should have won it yeah second half a lot better from Wrexham the change of formation allowed the players to express themselves I still think we had one too many attacking players on the on the pitch but Holroyd played off Quigley it led to the second goal Quigley you know uh, needs that partner around him um, Deverdix never really got into the game for me but uh, Franks did get in the game in the second half well, helped out his fullback um, well covered there but also drove forward and did start to create a couple of th a couple of things and, and link play quite well so it was nice to see him get involved uh, and I think yeah he, he looked more comfortable in that 4-4-2 fourth, uh, fourth, four um, and credit to Dean for, for, and his team for switching it because it, it was crying out for it um, and I think if we'd have played 90 minutes in 4-4-2 we'd have probably won but that's hindsight yeah absolutely some players look more comfortable in that shape didn't they I mean particularly I think Franks on the right hand side who in the first half was anonymous but in the second half put in a great shift defensively and get, had some threat going forward so a shame he missed that chance with a minute of added time left yeah it is a shame but really I mean the game should have been won when uh, <laughs> Ange puts uh, quickly through with his first touch and quickly I mean he quickly's just probably not expecting him to, to be in that position and snatches at it but you know and then like you said Frank's had a, a chance perhaps to you know a bit more time than he probably thought he had but yeah it wasn't to be uh, fortunate to take the lead I suppose in the first half um, and fortunate the way the goal hit, the, the, the goal against the run of play and the way we took the goal um, Aldershot will be I'm sure happy with the point and it's another draw and another you know a, a day where three points would have really put us back in contention that's right four draws in a row and, and, and Dean Keats changed that starting formation drastically clearly looking to address that and get more creativity into the side well in the, in the first half when we played the 4-2-3-1 there wasn't any creativity and, and we, we struggled and were incredibly lucky to be level at the break but having said that in, in the second half we went back to a uh, familiar shape 
and we certainly can't complain about a lack of creativity in the second half. We've just got to bemoan the fact that some terrific chances were created and not taken. Yeah, um, I think the fans got the money's worth in the second half. It was entertaining, uh, a little perhaps open, too much, too much open, but. Um, Aldershot didn't really create a great deal in the second half apart from set pieces again another worrying trend and we mentioned it in commentary that we have conceded or looked under pressure from free kicks and corners as much as our defence has got the, the 20 clean sheets this year that's where we seem to concede goals from um, is set pieces but yeah I mean it's nice to score two goals it's nice we score more than one again and it's nice to look more threatening than we did uh, the jigsaw is not quite quite right yet yeah absolutely it a, a, a tiny little cameo from Simon Ainge at the end making his debut and uh, to be fair he only he came on four minutes from the end but he put himself about rather effectively doesn't he yeah I mean it's proof is in the pudding we'll wait and see we'll see a bit more of him but you know he's, he's a centre half that's played at this level and the level below uh, and you know not journeyman but has been around a few clubs uh, converted to centre forward uh, needs must and scored a lot of goals now we have often seen you know, when you put Sean Pearson or Manny Smith up front to the top for the last five ten minutes, and defenders cause problems because defenders know what defenders have got to do, and they've also got a bit of nous about how to do it. Um, and if he's that type of player, we need a nasty battering round. We haven't had one in the squad. I think you need one in the national league. Well, I, I know you need one. I've been saying it all season. That's what we were missing. Um, and the way we we need a focal point. Now we've got Quigley as a direct big man running. Now uh, we've got Holroyd as a clever little striker that links off it. That was the that was the sort of striker we were missing. Um, it's a plan B. It can be a plan A against certain teams. But he showed in the few minutes. Just he's not he's not as tall as I thought he might be. But he's he's got enough about him that he won a few headers against some bigger centre halves. And he he caused them problems, more problems than we caused prior to that. Absolutely, man of the match, then James. Who are you going for? Well, sponsors went for Quigley, and you know the goal scorers get the plaudits. He did take the second goal really, really well. Took his time. Nice one-on-one -on -one finish. But the first goal, <laughs> we don't really know what happened. But, you know, he scored two goals and he scored. as it got good scoring rate. He should have scored um, at the end to win it for us. But that's, that's not why I'm not giving him um, the, the man of the match. I think there's only one candidate I can give it to. Um, and we picked him out in commentary quite a bit. And I think if you went back and listened to it and we did a tally chart of how many times makes uh, gets the last cover or makes that final clearance, Kevin Roberts would, for me, as man of the match, I thought he had he was left isolated on the, in the first half and did a manfully. Um, and Aldershot, uh, Aldershot uh, came down, uh, in, uh, went down the other opposite flank uh, in that point to allow him for it. So I think he covered really well um, and deserves the uh, man of the match for the clearances off the line. Yeah, no argument from me. What a game that was in the second half with the final score of Wrexham to Aldershot Town 2.